A mother is charged after she snuck into a middle school pretending to be her own daughter. A Japanese man was charged after spitting in front of a pickle shop for a year. And a patient has died after a security guard performed surgery at a hospital. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News. This is the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian in a closet. And this is my 1,000th episode. (laughs) The 1,000th episode of Weird AF News. What a milestone. Let's do it, guys. A Texas mother has been charged after she snuck into school and pretended to be her own daughter. El Paso, Texas. A 30-year-old mom was arrested after posing as her daughter at a middle school. She says she did all of this to push for better security at the daughter's school. And if that is true, and not just some sort of excuse that she made up after being arrested and embarrassed, then... Hey, why not? This is pretty effective. Sometimes you got to take drastic measures. Casey Garcia is the name of the mom. She's four foot 11 inches tall, weighs about 105 pounds. So, you know, body wise, she could, I guess, totally pass as a middle school girl. Does she look like her daughter? She must in some way. She was arrested, this Casey Garcia, on one count each of criminal trespassing and tampering with government records, officials say. What is with the tampering of government records? I guess uh, signing off on the lunch ticket, <laughs> pretending to be <laughs> her daughter. <laughs> yes, I would like that slice of pizza. I am. Okay, she was arrested on an unrelated traffic warrant as well. All right, that's not helpful. Deputies were notified by the independent school district campus officials that Casey trespassed on school grounds and posed as a student. Oh, no. Several posts were made on social media documenting her pretending to be a student. An investigation led to two warrants being issued for her arrest. Uh, Was this smart to put it all on social media? Well, I mean, if, if the point is to bring attention to the lack of security at your daughter's school because you're worried that just anybody could sneak into the school, which is should be a concern right now because people do go into the schools. They go into schools with weapons. Um, At least in the United States, this is pretty common. So in a YouTube video titled, Why I Posed as My 13-Year-Old Daughter, she says she dyed her hair and used skin tanner to pose as the girl. She says that after she was asked for her ID number at the school and whether she had signed in, she was allowed inside. She claims school staff was more concerned about her phone being out than who she actually was. She says she was the only student, quote, in one of my classes, the only one, adding the teachers were so preoccupied with the students that were online that they weren't really paying attention to the students that were there physically. Oh, so at the school, there's a mixture of students taking classes via Zoom and then students who are physically at the school. This makes it even more alarming because she was only one of a few and they still couldn't figure out (laughs) that she was... It doesn't say how old she is, but I assume she's in her 30s at least. She goes on to say that she actually praises her daughter's teachers, but says it's a problem at all schools these days. She says, I bet you anything someone else can do this. This is why I did this, whether you agree with me or not. I wanted to bring attention to this. Later, she says, I think the deal breaker for me was actually walking in and posing as a seventh grader. I mean, I'm no spring chicken, but it wasn't very hard. And I made it to all seven classes until the last teacher, who was a female, said, "Uh, Julie, can you please stay after class? And I said, absolutely. She looked at me and said, you're not Julie. No, I'm not. (laughs) I replied. I took off my mask. I took off my glasses. I said, I'm not Julie. I'm Julie's mother. The teacher asked why. I said, I think uh, I boggled her mind, but I had to tell her why I did all this and what just happened. She calls this a social experiment to see if she could make it the entire day without anyone noticing. And up until the last period, it's a pretty long day for a 30-year-old to be inside a middle school posing as a student. (laughs) She says she did it to prove a point. Can you get through the public school system pretending to be a child? She adds, she also added, I ate lunch without my mask on. I mean, I thought that was going to be the deal breaker, but it wasn't. I ate my entire lunch and no one knew. (laughs) That's pretty, this is outrageous, but I kind of like what she did. Uh, I feel bad that she's got to face criminal charges. I mean, uh, that's a shame, but hey, 
it's worth it. I think if you can ensure and or at least create a discussion around the safety of schools within your school district. Casey says regarding her motivation, I'm telling you right now, we need better security at our schools. This is what I tried to prove. And I, I kind of feel like I proved it. I feel like she's proved it as well. And I think we need a extra security these days because everyone's wearing masks on the campuses. And so you know, it's very difficult to discern who is allowed on property and who isn't could probably infiltrate just about anything as a child these days. I mean, if you happen to be a shorter person, you could try just get on a little league team wearing a mask. Next thing you know, you're a 40 year old man hitting home runs in a little league team. I mean, you shouldn't even be on the team. A Japanese man is charged with spitting in front of the same pickle shop for most of 2020. Just spitting in front of a pickle shop. How dare you, sir? Well, I don't know. Let's find out some more information. Maybe the pickle shop did him wrong. There's an old adage in Japan that states, the customer is God, as a way to instill good customer service among staff. But the thing about God is that gods can be spiteful. If you offend a god in the slightest way, they can bring out prolonged darkness and misery. Such was the case when a man in his 60s visited a pickle store in Osaka City in autumn 2019. The pickled food shop owner and customer got into a dispute. The details of the dispute aren't very clear but the customer was feeling very unsatisfied to express his displeasure he returned to the store several times a month uttering curses such as die and then would spit on the walkway in front of the store (laughs) this reportedly occurred between january to october of 2020 that's about 10 months worth of cursing and spitting now spitting in public is frowned upon in japan And doing so in places where people gather, such as food courts, is a violation of the Minor Crimes Act. But the pickle store decided to let it slide for the better part of a year, assuming that the man would get tired after prolonged cursing and spitting. But months passed by. The COVID-19 problem grew increasingly serious in Japan. Last September, the shop owner confronted this man that spit in front of his pickle store, but ended up being charged with assault. I wonder if he hit him with a pickle. Uh, <laughs> he, he explained the situation to the police and told them it was extremely unhygienic with the growing COVID-19 problem for this man to be spitting around his store or anywhere, really. And the stress of repeatedly telling this man to stop spitting was too much to bear for him. This resulted in a prolonged investigation of this serial spitter. <laughs> I can't believe this is a real story. Finally, the Osaka Prefectural Police conducted a stakeout in front of the pickle shop, and they witnessed the man spit twice on the ground. They swooped in and confronted the man right on the spot. He denied the charges, saying that he spit only because he was coughing. This, of course, delayed things. Further investigation was needed. Ultimately, a criminal charge on May 31st, after it was deemed that the spitter's actions were actually highly malicious. Meanwhile... Readers of the news story were filled with a conflicting mix of awe and pity for this man that was spitting in front of a pickle store. Here's some quotes from people who expressed themselves about this situation. (laughs) He must have been running out of spit by that point anyway to be spitting that long in front of the store. It's amazing dedication. Seems like he should be able to put that energy towards some good use. Such focus. What a waste. How about we all go and spit in front of his house? That would be fair. (laughs) I like that one. Spit in front of his house. Someone else wrote, the guy must have too much free time to spend it all consumed with a stupid grudge like this. (laughs) This is true. This guy has a lot of free time on his hands. He's in his 60s. I say he's probably retired. Imagine being retired and you got nothing to do. You got a grudge against a place and you just make it your, your daily chore to walk by and spit on the ground and curse them. Now, in Japan, punishments for violating the Minor Crimes Act include up to 30 days in jail or a fine between 1 and 10,000 yen. Imagine going to jail for 30 days for spitting. Seems very strange. It would make sense if you spit on the queen to go to jail for that long. Says here, hopefully this will be enough to make this man snap out of whatever disgruntled customer grudge spiral he appears to be stuck in. Yeah, I'd like to know what this grudge comes out of. This guy's got a some sort of uh, pickle standards that weren't being met by the pickle place enough for him to just spit for 10 months in front of the joint (laughs) i 
just kidding. I've never, I've never been that much of a stickler for my pickles. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Yay! A patient has passed away after a security guard performed surgery on her at a hospital. How does this happen? How does a security guard end up wielding a scalpel in the middle of the operating room? I would like to know. Let's get to the bottom of this weird story. It's out of Pakistan. A woman died after a former security guard at a hospital in Pakistan posed as a doctor and performed actual surgery on her. This poor woman Shamima Begum, age 80, she died over the weekend. This was two weeks after a man by the name of Mohammed Butt. Yeah, that's right. His last name is Butt. If, you, if your doctor has the last name of Butt, I think you're in trouble. This guy attempted to treat her back wound. Of course, he's got to treat something on the backside. His last name is Butt. He treated her back wound at a public hospital in the eastern city of Lahore. L-A-H-O-R-E. I think I pronounced that correctly. Maybe it's Lahore. Lahore, whoa. Here's a quote from an administrative official at Lahore's hospital. We can't keep up with what every doctor and what everyone is doing at all times here. It's a large hospital. (laughs) That is the lamest excuse, man. We can't keep track of all the doctors. We have so many. No, you can't. You have no clue when a security guard just comes in. (laughs) <laughs> picks up a scalpel, just starts operating. No idea. We can't keep track. Oh, there's just so many patients, so many doctors, so many wings, so many ERs, so many ORs. What are we going to do? So many nurses. We just can't keep track. Can't. <laughs> How about you make sure the guy's got like an ID on him? I got, I mean, there's got to be ways, right? This guy worked as a security guard at your hospital, correct, at one point. So it seems to me like you have a security system of some sort. There's some sort of security infrastructure. I would imagine the security infrastructure is is there to do, among other things, make sure that no one that isn't a doctor ends up in an OR operating on a patient. How about that? (laughs) So sad. Ridiculous. Says here it was unclear what type of surgery that the imposter had performed in the operating theater where a qualified technician was also present. I'm I'm glad the technician uh, recognized that the guy working the door last week was now in the operating room (laughs) going to town. (laughs) Way to be aware, technician. Pakistan's public hospitals where patients are required to pay towards treatment can often be inefficient and chaotic. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like at a Pakistan hospital. Can you imagine? It says here, Begum's family paid butt for the operation. Uh, The guy even got paid. (laughs) And two further home visits to dress her wound. The the security guard then made some house calls afterward? (laughs) Are you kidding me? How? What the... (laughs) He's he's in there leafing through records, you know, getting the address of the patient, going to visit them at home. This is unbelievable that it even got this far. I can't even wrap my head around this. Now, this Dr. Butt has been charged, is in police custody. It says Butt posed as a doctor and made home visits to other patients in the past as well. This guy's been, how long has this been going on? This guy's a security guard at a hospital. He's got a dream, though. He's like, oh, I want to be a doctor, but all that schooling, mm, ooh, that's a pesky schooling that you have to go through. <laughs> Why do all that when I could just put on some scrubs and just you know, wash my hands at that sink that I see them do? <laughs> Maybe he got a little name tag and wrote, Dr. Butt. It just moseyed on into the operating theater. Why go through all those hoops when you could just mosey on into the operating theater and pick up a knife? Introduce yourself to people who have no idea who they're working with, clearly. It says here, Butt was fired two years ago for trying to extort money from patients as well. He was fired there as a security guard and then came back, posed as a doctor. This guy's got dreams, man. 
Earlier in May, a man was arrested as well for posing as a doctor at a Lahore General Hospital and extorting money from patients in the surgical ward. What's going on in these Pakistani hospitals? In 2016, it was revealed that a woman posing as a neurosurgeon, neurosurgeon, that's the, you don't want anybody posing as a neurosurgeon. Of all the surgeons, the brain surgeon, that is scary. So the woman posed as a neurosurgeon had been conducting operations for eight months along qualified doc- alongside qualified doctors. <laughs> and you know, you can you can imagine there's not a lot of neurosurgeons, correct? I would imagine, I'm not that familiar with hospital staffing. But I'd imagine your neurosurgeons are very low on the roster list. So you should recognize most of your neurosurgeons. This one's this woman's posing for eight months operating on people's brains. <laughs> oh no. Oh, this is just this is so alarming. I, I just don't even know where people get the balls to do such things. It astounds me. I can barely get up the courage to pretend to have better seats at the baseball game, you know, and walk past. The, the security guards to the lower levels. I can't even do that. Pull that off. Never mind pretending to be a neurosurgeon. Sure. Oh, let's open up the skull and let's begin. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, 1,000 episodes in the books, guys. What a milestone. I'm super proud. I've never committed to anything like this podcast. I have to tell you. No, actually, I mean, I've been doing stand-up comedy for quite a long time, too. That's been a commitment. Certainly been playing softball forever. That's been a commitment. My commitment to in- intake of caffeine is there as well, I have to say. It's daily, baby. It's daily and it's never ending. <laughs> so, but this podcast, wow, a thousand episodes. Um, um, I never thought I would get to this level, but hey, man, we're going to keep plugging away. You guys want the weird news? I'm going to deliver the weird news. I hope you've been satisfied throughout the years that I've been doing this. I'm doing the best I can, uh, <laughs> given the circumstances. <laughs> And um, I think the reviews reflect that. In fact, I got a nice review to balance out the last uh, terrible review. And I want to thank Gen G, who left me five stars on Amazon. And the title is Funny as Hell! Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Thank you, Gen G. Gen G wrote me the following. I've been listening to this podcast for a while now. I found it on my Google News add-ons and kept listening for the Florida Friday stories. Jonesy has gotten so good over the years. I highly recommend listening. You can't beat the strange and bizarre, the ridiculous and the scary, the gross and the ones that make you go WTF. Anyways, thanks Jonesy for the five days a week of strange for free. Makes my week a lot more enjoyable commuting and a lot more fun learning some pretty incredible things. My husband is now a fan, by the way. Stay weird. Oh, you converted your husband to Weird AF News, Gen G. That's fabulous. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are listening and bonding over some weird news. Maybe I've even improved your love life. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Jen. It doesn't say how long you've been listening, but perhaps you've been listening since episode number eight, number 12, number 112. I don't know. Sounds like you've been listening for a long time, though. And I thank you for your commitment, Jen and your loyal listenership, and I appreciate the review. It's super helpful. Uh, If you guys want to leave a review, you can do so at Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes, and uh, Amazon as well. So uh, thank you so much, Jen, for that great review. And uh, tell your husband I said, what's up? Also, uh, let me see, got new patrons. Yes, give it up for Denise. Denise Lennon just became a patron. Unbelievable. Denise Lennon. I don't know where you're from, Denise, but now you are a member of a cool little group called the Weird AF News Gang of Patrons. I just made that up. They don't, we don't really have a name, but we're definitely a gang. They're definitely a gang of, of patrons and fans of the show. And now you get to join them, and they're fabulous, wonderful people. And you also get to unlock all that goodies, all that goody, goodies, all that goodies, all that goodness that lies inside the Patreon. And you also uh, get to be joined by someone named Sabine Saroyan, who also joined the Patreon. Hey, Sabine Saroyan. I hope I said that name right. It could be Sabine, but I think it's Sabine. Sabine, thank you. Um, I have a feeling you might not live in the United States. I'm very curious to learn more about you, Sabine. Let's find out what's going on here. Uh, I'll I'll drop you a little message, a little D. I'll DM both of you in the Patreon. I usually do that anyways to thank the new patrons, give you a little personal message, uh, welcoming you to the little crew that we have in there. Uh, Please enjoy the extra weird AF content that's in there as well, Sabine. And know every night when you go to sleep that you are contributing to the production of the only daily weird news podcast that has made it to 1,000 episodes. 
you know, and that's a good feeling. You don't want to don't look at you don't want to give your hard earned cash to a podcast that you're not sure is going to be around a year from now, do you? No, you want to give it to someone who you know is going to be there, someone that's reliable, that's there for you five days a week. Who else but me? Right? Thanks again, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, ooh, also, someone bought me more coffee. Who's this individual? I have to hold on. I have to go back to my email here. Oh, yes. Uh, Janor. Janor Singh once again sent me some coffee. This isn't the first time Janor, Janor has given me some coffee. Um, and of course, I'm always grateful to receive uh, some coffees. You know, you guys, you guys know how much I love my caffeine. I love my coffees. So Janor, thank you once again for making my weekend. When I saw this message, oh, Jonesy, didn't just buy me one coffee, bought me a bevy of coffees, a bevy, B-E-V-Y. Yeah, that's a word that means um, a, like a shitload, I think. <laughs> Janor bought me a shitload of coffees. So big shout out. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All the support I've been getting is, f- is fabulous over this thousand episode show that I'm doing. Um, it's brought a lot to my life and I hope I bring something to your life as well. If you guys would like to, uh, I don't know, congratulate me on a thousand episodes, send me an email, funnyjones at gmail.com. Uh, you can call the show as well. Six, four, six, four, five, zero, 2012, or reach out to me on the Instagram at funny Jones on Twitter at funny Jones. Uh, you can even leave me a review and within that review, be like, Oh my goodness, this thing is a thousand episodes in. And, and, and uh, I'm going to keep listening forever and ever. I hope you listen forever and ever. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, I guess that's about it. Uh, I hope you're having a lovely Monday. I know they can be dreary, but you know, or maybe you're listening to this Tuesday morning. Um, just know that I'm here for you. Call me up, say hello. I'll be here for another 10,000 episodes. You can, you can, you can put your money on that one. Good morning, Jonesy. It's Maria in Miami, Florida. I just heard a story on the radio. You might want to check the internet for the exact details. A Florida man, Jeffrey, age 24, was searching a Florida river for shark teeth to make, you know, jewelry out of shark teeth. And all of a sudden, an alligator snuck up behind him and bit him. I'm not sure if the gator bit him on the hand or the head, but Jeffrey needed 34 stitches. Oh, how scary. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Hey, Jones, it's Michael calling from Iowa City, and um, I'm calling specifically in response to uh, one of your stories from Friday, and um, in that note, I want to say that I really value and admire your sense of fairness in the way that you, you know, will read bad reviews as well as the good ones, and you, you know, read the bad review, and then you will comically address it, and I get a kick out of the way you uh, respond to those. Sometimes it's very funny as you're reading those. But um, you and I agree on most things, and our opinions are largely the same. But in reading that story about the two kids who ran away from the youth home and, and broke into someone's home and then had a standoff with police officers using the weapons inside the home, an AK-47 and a shotgun, uh, the officers were under fire from these children for about a half an hour, and the officers did not return fire, which was the appropriate thing to do to try to avoid that for as long as possible, to try to talk those kids out. The officers even threw in a cell phone into the house while they were, you know, under fire doing that, the the report said. So, you know, with children especially, you want to try to uh, do everything possible to resolve the situation, you know, peacefully without using deadly force. But from the moment those children shot at the police officers, that's deadly force, and the police officers have the right to respond in kind, you know, with an equal measure of force. That means the police officers had a right to shoot back. But you said something I don't think you would defend the word that you used. You said something to the effect of it's a miracle those kids weren't murdered on the spot. And I don't really think you would defend the use of the word murder. Um, I think you just mean that it's 
it's a miracle they weren't shot back immediately and killed right away by the officers. Um, it would not be murder by the police officers because they had the right to use deadly force in response to the children shooting at them. So, you know, I'm, I, my hair on my back bristles at the use of the word murder because the, it would not be murder because the police would have every right to use, um, deadly force in return. But, you know, most police officers, they join the force and they do it with good intentions. And while I admit there is systemic racism or systemic problems in many police units, uh, the majority of them do not have that kind of an issue. And that's clearly displayed here um, by the officer on in charge on duty that day who held off his officers from shooting for, you know, half an hour before they decided they finally had to resolve this situation and end it by using force.